Welcome to Oregon Cash Flow Pro. My name is James Barber. As always, I'm here to help you maximize your cash flow. I appreciate you guys joining me. Today, we're just going to go through and look at the comments that people have left recently. Jason, can I explain the seven payback test? Can you reduce life insurance after seven payments? Is it better doing seven payments versus 20 years for same amount of contribution? Good question. Okay. So the seven pay MEC test, there's two MEC tests. There's the guideline premium test, cash value accumulation test. And the cash value accumulation test uses the seven pay non-MEC amount. The first seven years in a policy is your first MEC period. So whatever money you put into a policy, the maximum amount you put in in any given year in those first seven years is going to determine where you're, whether you're violating that MEC limit or not. After those seven years, you can recalculate those numbers. We can reduce the MEC test. But whatever number you hit for contributions during those first seven years, we can't reduce it below that number. Let's say that you get a policy designed with a $50,000 MEC limit. That means you can put in up to $50,000 each year in the policy. And you put in $40,000 in the first year. And then after that, you put in $10,000 for the next couple of years. The plan was you, you were going to put in fifty. dollars That's why we designed the policy that way. And we started it that way. But things changed. Something happened. And your plans changed. You can no longer fund it at $50,000. You can only do $10,000. And so you say, James, I'm not going to be able to fund this at $50,000. Is there a way that we can make this more efficient? If we're three years into it and you funded it up to 40,000 in one of those years, the MEC test has to be able to meet that $40,000 requirement. So this policy does not become a MEC. We can reduce the death benefit a little bit to bring that total MEC limit down to 40,000 instead of the 50,000 it was at. Now that's not going to be very much savings, but it is possible to reduce it a little bit. We have to make it that full seven years before we can do that. Once we get past year seven, we can drop it down to a $10,000 mech. Let's say that for that 50,000 mech, it took um, 900,000 in death benefit. And for the 40,000 mech, we only need 800,000 in death benefit. If we reduce that, that might save you, you know, a hundred bucks a year in expenses. So it's not a whole lot of savings because of how we design these policies. It's actually very inexpensive for that extra 100,000 in death benefit. Um, and then finally, is it better to do seven payments versus 20 years for the same amount of contributions? Generally, yes, because of how we do the design. So the design is, is kind of important, but also what's gonna determine which one's actually better is the performance of the index. If we get that money in over seven years, as opposed to 20, we've got all of that money that's going to grow and potentially compound for an extra 13 years as opposed to spreading it out over 20 years. Now, if we spread it out over 20 years, we require, we don't require as much death benefit. So our MEC limit could be a lot lower. But how much is that expense between the two? And we usually will run illustrations so I can actually show you the numbers and we can see what that difference is for your particular situation. So my assumption is, yes, with the designs that we do, Getting it in over seven years, because of all of those potential years of compounding, it's likely much better to do that uh, same amount of payments over seven years as opposed to 20. Oftentimes, people might have a chunk of cash that they're looking to put in, and we'll look at what is the most efficient time period. And it's usually we're looking at less than seven years. So they're, they're usually like, can I dump it all in at the beginning? Well, you could, but it's going to require much more death benefit in order to get it in in one year. It might be worthwhile. I mean, remember, you're going to have to pay for all that death benefit for seven years. If you dump it all in in one year, we can't reduce the death benefit below that MEC limit. So we're going to require a much bigger MEC limit to get it all in over one year. It could be worthwhile if the index performs really good beginning in that first year. But maybe it doesn't. We don't know what the index is going to do. Nobody does, right? So we've got to figure out what's the right balance between growth potential and minimizing our expenses. And usually that means let's take that lump sum and put it in over three years 
or five years. And that allows for a much lower death benefit. We don't need the MEC limit quite as high when we do that. And we still get most of the money in quickly enough that we can take advantage of some compounding that's going to happen. So that's usually what we end up doing. And uh, we just run the numbers. And ultimately, it's up to, to the client to decide how they want to get it in there. But sometimes that MEC limit might be so high and that the, the death benefit needed, maybe they don't even qualify for that much. That's always a possibility too. So those are just some of the things that we go through when we're trying to answer questions like this. I hope you found value in today's video. If you'd like to find out more about IUL and the whole life, check out these videos right over here and we'll see you next time. Now go maximize your cash flow.